Hello everyone. So dear students, today we are again here with a very beautiful poem, Amanda. From the book, first slide of class 10. This poem actually refers to all the young teenager, girls and boys who are not in the favor of the nagging being done by their parents. Whenever their parents point them out for any mistake, they feel bad for it and they fantasize different things in their life because actually they want to be free. They want to be free because this is the age when it is very difficult to differentiate between a right and wrong. This poem is written by Robin Clay. Now, Robin Klein was born on 28th of February, 1936 in New South Wales. She was born in a family of nine children. Leaving school at the age of 15, she worked for several jobs before becoming a writer. And the amazing part is her first story was published at the age of 16. And later, she became a very famous Australian writer. She is considered to be most prolific, most intellectual, productive writer of her time. Her work has been appreciated by the readers. Moving ahead to the poem, let's talk about the learning goals first. The first learning goal which we derive from the poem is to know about the views of a little girl, Amanda, who is constantly pointed out by her mother for making mistakes. The second, to get the message that mistakes which she considers so as they are not part of the code of good conduct laid out by the society in which she lives. And I think that is the reason why her mother is pointing her out to improve those mistakes. This poem represents all the young boys and girls in the society. Because you know, in our society, a certain code of conduct is being finalized for people. And it is mandatory for all of us to follow. There are revolutionaries who change the conduct, but generally parents want their children to follow it. And the same was here with the girl, Aman. Now here, let's start with stanza one. Now before I start with it, let me just tell you that stanza one, three, five, and seven are the lines being spoken by the mother. Stanza two, four, and six are, have the lines which are imagined by Aman. She is not speaking these things, but she is imagining as a revert to what her mother is saying. Here we go, stanza one and two. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't haunt your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. So as you can see in these three lines of stanza one, Amanda's mother is pointing her out for three different behaviors. She don't want her to bite her nails. She's pointing her out to keep her shoulders straight. She's, she don't want her to bend the shoulders. Hound means to bend forward. And she wants her to sit straight actively. Slouching means when you sit in a lazy way. So her mother wants her to sit active. Now in these three, in the first line, we have the device repetition. Now why we have used the device repetition? Because Amanda is the name which has been repeated in all the three lines of the stanza. In the second line, we have anaphora device because here, don't is a word which is repeated in two different lines. So anaphora device has been used where two lines are containing the same words constant. In the third line, we have alliteration device, stop, slouching, sit, straight. S is the alphabet being repeated. Now let's see in stanza two, what Amanda is imagining. 
there is a languid emerald sea where the sole inhabitant is me, a mermaid drifting blissfully. So here, Amanda is imagining to live in a sea which has green color water. Emerald is a stone that is a green color. So she is imagining a sea with green color water there she is the only living habitat living there peacefully, languid. She is living there peacefully without any disturbance. She wants to be a mermaid. She's saying that I want to be a mermaid who can swim drift, drifting down the water, who can swim freely in the sea water. And nobody is there to point her out for anything. The rhyming scheme of stanza one and two is A A B A A. Going ahead to stanza three and four. Did you finish your book, Amanda? Did you tidy your room, Amanda? I thought I told you to clean your shoes, Amanda. So again, her mother is asking her certain questions. She's asking that whether she has done her homework or not. She's asking that had she cleaned her room or her shoes, which was instructed to her. You know, the word here, which has been mentioned by her mother, that shows that Amanda is a teenage girl who is capable enough to clean her room, to do her homework, and to clean her shoes. And that is the reason why her mother is telling her to do these things. In the first line, we have anaphora because did is again weighted in two consecutive lines. We have assonance device, uh, device in the second line. O is repeated, I is repeated, A is repeated. All these three are vowels. And in the third line, we have alliteration device. Thought told to. So T is repeated here. Moving to the stanza four where Amanda is imagining. I am an orphan roaming the street. I pat and sob dust with my harsh bare feet. The silence is gold and freedom is sweet. So now here Amanda is imagining herself as an orphan. Why she wants to be an orphan? Because she don't like her mother pointing out things. So she's thinking that if I'm going to be an orphan, nobody's going to, going to be there to point me out. And she wants to roam around in the street without any foundation. On one hand, her mother wants her to clean her shoes. And here in the imagination, she don't even want to wear the shoes. She's imagining to walk barefoot on the dust and make patterns on the dust with her feet. She's comparing the silence as gold and freedom as sweet. Because there is going to be a silence in her life because nobody is going to be there to say anything. And she is going to be free. Here in the stanza three and four, the rhyming scheme is A-A-B-A-A. -A -A -A. Moving ahead to stanza five and six. Don't eat that chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. Will you please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda? Now again, mother is there with another nagging. Nagging means when you are being humiliated. But actually here, it is not the part of a humiliation, but she is being pointed out for things she's doing wrong according to her mother. So in the first line, her mother is telling her not to eat chocolates because that will lead to acne on her face. And in the third line, she wants her to look at her when she's talking. Because this shows that Amanda might not be paying attention to what her mother is saying. In all the three rhymes, we have Ezonen's device because different vowels have been repeated in different lines. And we have repetition device because Amanda is being repeated in all the three lines. Moving ahead to stanza six where Amanda is imagining, I am Rapunzel. Now we all know Rapunzel, the princess who was stolen by a witch and was kept in an isolated tower next to the seashore. And there was no other way to reach the tower except the window. This princess had long golden hairs 
she used to hang the hair down the window and her aunt used to climb up. And one day, she hanged the hair and a prince climbed up and he escaped the princess. So she wants to be Rapunzel. Not because she wants a prince to come in her life, but because she wants to live isolated as she used to live in the town. I have not a care and she don't want anyone to take care of her. Life is a tar and tranquil and rare because she's imagining that when she live in the tar, the life is going to be peaceful and very different. I'll certainly never let down my bright hairs. And she is saying that I am not going to drop, drop down my hairs like Rapunzel because I don't want anyone to come up the tar and disturb me. Right? The rhyming scheme here is A-A-V, A-A-V. Okay. And here we have the last stanza. Stop that sulking at once, Amanda. Are you always so moody, Amanda? Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. Now, finally, the mother is ending up the argument by saying, she, by telling her that don't behave in a sulking way, suddenly moody way. Because after listening this much, Amanda is behaving in a moody way. And mother is asking that why you are always in moody? Why don't you understand what I'm telling you? And she is saying that if you will not behave in a proper way, people would feel that I'm nagging you. How funny. After nagging her in the first previous six stanzas, finally she's saying that she don't want to be recognized as a nagging parent. Okay. In the first line, we have the device alliteration, stop sulking, S. In the second line, we have assonance, repetition of O, A. That's all. The rhyming scheme of the stanza is A, A. So here we have come to the end of the poem, Amanda. Now, what is the moral? So here, if we talk about the moral from the parent's side, we should try to understand the intention behind our parents' words. As they are, are well be sure. If your parents are saying something to you, you need to understand that. Then only you will be able to live your life happily. And we should try to share our feelings to them if it is needed. Like never imagine the things by your own, but try to share whatever you are feeling with your parents because they are going to help. So here we have come to the end of the poem. I hope the poem Amanda is clear to you. We'll get back with another story. Thank you.